All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, this is Manuel James Delgado, and you are listening to the good old Life on Mission podcast, powered by none other than the Pace Movement. We are shifting a little bit because we want to jump into the Kingdom-centric series that we've been working with, with the author of the book, Paul Clayton Gibbs, also founder of Pace Movement. We're going to be jumping into chapter five, which is all about the church. And Paul is on the other side. What's up, bro? Yeah, no, glad. I'm loving this series with you, uh, Manny. It's great because uh, just the, the chance to chat through the chapters has been really good and had some good feedback as well. So, yeah, I think we're starting a trend because, you know, some of the other Pace team now they're doing like these uh, podcasts about now we just read this chapter right. and this is what we got out of it. So, I mean, it's it's really cool. I, it, it just puts more, you know, action and fruit to a book that you spent so much time in. So, I think that's yeah. important. And especially when other people are are kind of sharing it because you and i know that you know to teach is to learn twice so as they're sharing Mm -hmm. it's helpful but anyway yeah i think then we need to do it a few more times so we can actually learn from it (laughs) (laughs) awesome okay so the chapter before was all about the bible and it's about you know why do we read the bible are we reading it to be you know consuming you know uh, i think you brought like a few different avenues of the bible and how we read it one was like more like a like a law book or like instructional book one was like a consumer and you said that if it was for those purposes he could have done a better job <laughs> he said yeah, something so it, like that. It, wasn't, it wasn't that kind of right so it was i was talking about the, the handbook idea handbook, so if god yeah. wants us to create a handbook um we did yeah. talk about it being like a book of law as well which we can come on to a minute but we talked about this idea of if it's a handbook but yeah. I think God could have done a, you know, if it was just simply, oh, I've got this problem, where do I go? And this is the answer. Yeah, I think, exactly. Not that it's bad, of course, but that God, if it wanted to be a straightforward handbook, God could have done a better job. Yeah, and yeah. really, the, yeah. the, the, the pivot, we're talking about pivot with each of these subjects. The mm-hmm. pivot is that to be Christian centric uh, is to open the Bible to search for what's in God's hands. What's mm-hmm. the key centric is to open the Bible to search for what's in his heart. And that was the key thing that we were trying to get across, I think. Yeah, yeah. Really, really, really good. Um, I, I remember one one preacher, he's saying that, you know, everything in the Bible is true, but not all truth is in the Bible. That's right. And, yeah. And, and, yeah. And so we use the Bible to see what's in God's heart so we can, you know, adapt it to what is around us and what he wants us to reach and help transform. So that's really good. So now this is a fun one, you know, because um, I, don't, I don't know about you, but, you know, I grew up in the church, but then went away for a while yeah. and did my, but did my own thing. And when I came back, I was so thankful for what God took me out of that. When I got involved with church, I was just all in to just right. serve and build up the body. And I could not understand why other people weren't doing the same because it's just like, come on, this is amazing stuff, yeah. you know? And just hearing your story too about your journey with uh meeting Christ and 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 serving in the church. Um, I don't know, was this a fun chapter for you to write? Um, I don't know if it's a fun chapter. I think as I've taught it, I found it to be for some people a more challenging chapter, which mm. has been interesting. Um, yeah. but I've had a lot of feedback from this chapter as well. Like people really say, I mean, I think it's in my opinion, it's the simplest chapter, you know, it's mm-hmm. there's less, yeah. There's less of the context and all the digging into the background of it all. Um, so for me, I, I kind of thought well, this is the most obvious chapter. And yet for, for a lot of people, it's been like, oh, actually, this is the one that really got to me. Because obviously the whole kingdom centric thing generally has been about um, just our, our general heart. And then this is more about the disciplines. And this discipline is one that's really affected people. Your screen is frozen, Manny. I don't know if that's a problem or not. What just happened here? Okay, we're back. Are you back? Yeah, you froze for quite a while there, just so we know. Yeah, so we're in. we're gonna we're gonna start from uh, from uh, was this was this an interesting okay uh, chapter to write? Okay? okay, everything good here. Good. Three, two, one. Paul, was this an interesting chapter to write compared to all the other chapters? Um, so I don't know if it was any more interesting, but I've had perhaps more feedback from this. I thought in some ways it was less interesting because 
I had to do less research. It's a mm. quite simple chapter compared to some of the others where there's a lot of context and helping people understand what was really going on behind the scenes in the particular subjects. But a lot of people have talked to me about this one being the real challenging one or, or the one that really started to move from the theoretical to real practice. Mm. Um, I think the kind of book really gets very practical in this chapter. So yeah. the first few chapters, people are like, oh, yeah, well, let me let me go back a, a sec. I think there are three ways of looking at the kingdom centric message. One is I don't want that. I want to remain Christian centric. I want it to be all about me. The second is, yeah, I want to become kingdom centric and I really want to become a move in that direction. And then there's another group that I've only just discovered, which is oh, wow. a group that identifies as kingdom centric. So they hear the theory and they're like, yeah, I mean, I, I preach in churches where the pastors got up and said, hey, we're a kingdom centric church. And the whole church has gone, yeah, we're a kingdom centric church. And I'm thinking, probably not really yet. You, you want to be and you, you align yourself to the theory. But yeah. when you get into the practice, that's when the rubber hits the road. And in mm. this book, that's that's what stands out to me about this chapter is there are a couple of things in it. And we'll probably mention them in a minute where. Yeah it gets slightly awkward you know people are like oh, okay i'm kingdom centric but i haven't thought about that type thing you know so <laughs> oops <laughs> yeah. oh my goodness okay so so then you know if we're going to filter this and every other chapter of course with the the christian centric versus the kingdom centric when it comes to the church you wrote christian centric basically is we go to consume yeah and kingdom centric is basically we go to contribute Yes. So, so let, let's unpack that a little bit, you know, and explore how this mindset that, that you wrote about impacts church culture, community, personal, spiritual growth. Let, let's unpack that a little bit. Well, let, let's start with that pivot. So um, have you ever worked out how many verses or passages in the scripture reference church as some way you go to get something? Do you no know how many verses? Do you want me to know how many verses there are? Zero. <laughs> There's no, none. There's nowhere I can find in the Bible. I've asked around as well, just in case I'm missing something. There's nowhere that just the concept of going to receive something, it's just not there. Everywhere when the church is referenced, which interestingly in the New Testament, certainly in the Gospels, isn't a lot. So obviously, church, a Christian church didn't exist, but the synagogue did. And yeah. it's all about bringing, you know, it's all about bringing a song, bringing a word of testimony. Nice. It's all about bringing your gift. Um, and so for me, it, it's one of, like I say, it's one of these, it's really obvious. And yet it seems to really hit people. And obviously the consumeristic view of church, I think has really affected Christianity. Mm -hmm. I think it really backfired during COVID. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, because essentially uh, what was happening was what was really being preached, certainly in the kind of networks I'm involved in, is, you know, um, a church alive is worth the drive. So it's just like a whole mentality. Yeah. Of you go to receive something, it's worth the drive. And I understand that. You know, I'm not particularly picking at that. But the whole, the, again, this book is about reframing Christianity and the way church has been framed as it's a place to build you up, for you to go, for you to receive something, and it's the place for you to serve. Um, mm -hmm. So I think what happened was during COVID, people got out of the habit of going to church. Yeah. And in the book, I should talk, I can't remember off the top of my head, but in the book, I talk about the stats of how many people changed, stopped going to church. So people, it, it's back on the increase, but it's nowhere near the levels it was pre-COVID yet. But what is happening as well is the people who come to church now come less regularly than they did. So the habit was broken. Yeah, um, exactly. And I think that's partly because people thought this just started to weigh up. Well, why am I really at church? And if I'm at church for what, what what I get out of it, well, I can stay home and I can have a cup of coffee and watch my favorite preacher from somewhere else in the world yeah. and listen to some, some really professional worship. Why go to church? Mm -hmm. And so that that framing of it's all about you, I think backfired because people thought there's, there's other things I can do and I can go to church whatever time I want to. It works mm -hmm. around my other interests. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of people just don't understand the purpose of church. Um, I don't know if this is going too much on the side path of this topic, but, you know, good intentions are not always uh, fruitful. Mm -hmm. um, and what I hear um, for some of the reasons why it's all about you type atmosphere and even in the preaching is that you never know who's coming in. So we want to make 
them feel like they belong, like they are welcome here. And it is all about you because some people, you know, have never heard uh, the gospel. So we want to communicate that way. Yeah. What do you say about that? I just think, it, 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 well, it's like all bad things, this, that, we good things quite often, don't they? So like yeah. you say, there's, there's a good intention behind that. Absolutely. I mean, somebody once said, you know, years ago, um, people loved the head, but were embarrassed by the body. So I grew yeah. up in that, you know, things weren't done very professionally. It was awkward. I went to a Pentecostal mm. church. So one minute someone stands up and, get, and speaks in tongues, and the next minute someone stands up and says, I am the Lord, your God, don't look to the left or the right. But if you just walked into church and somebody's declaring themselves God, it's just, it's completely Oh, wow, yeah. And then the pendulum's shifted now so much, so it's people uh, love the body but don't necessarily know the head. And so, mm. you know, friends of mine have said in baptisms, it's no longer since I met Jesus, the testimony is now since I came to this church. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think that um, it just swung too far. And, and the other issue that creates is a bait and switch thing. So again, it goes back to that second episode where we talked about the gospel. Jesus didn't mm -hmm. come to rescue you. He came to recruit you. Exactly. And so what happens is it's all about you. Jesus died on the cross for you. If you were the only person on the planet, he would have come and rescued you. There's no necessary evidence for that, but that's what we say. Um, and then later on, it, we switch, right? So actually, you should be discipling and you should be sharing your faith. And so I just think that there's, there's again, I'm not saying we go back to some bad practices of the past. We need churches to be somewhat relevant. We need churches yeah. to be well done, certainly. Um, mm -hmm. But but I think they need to be well done in the right way. So another, if you give me, if I can give one more illustration, it's a bit like that old analogy of you you put a ladder against the wall and you gradually climb the rungs, you get better and better, get higher and higher, and you reach the top only to find out your ladder's leaning against the wrong wall. So we still <laughs> need the ladder, you know, we still need to we still need to grow and develop and do things well, but we need to put yeah. it against the right wall. And so yeah, you know, we need to make it welcoming, we need to do all those things, but fundamentally the message needs to start where it should be ending. Yeah, but I think uh, also like what you're saying in the previous chapter especially with the gospel we're only giving half of the message and, right. and, and so i think like the excuse or the, the the good intentions of how we preach in churches is if we were giving the full message that you're not only rescued yes of course he came to save you and people are celebrating and uh, angels are celebrating in heaven for everyone that has come to christ you Absolutely. know and all of those wonderful things but it's not because he, he didn't come just to save you he's called you you know, yes. he has a plan for you. And if we would communicate that all the time, then that would also help the way that people respond to the message because they know it's not just about them, yeah. but it's about the big picture and the unity of the body of Christ. That's right, yeah. And, and you know, on page, we've we mm. rewritten, we've re rewritten the sinner's prayer um, recently just to, to, to factor that in. Um, so yeah. fundamentally coming to Jesus, they're coming to him, understanding what they're getting into. <laughs> yeah. And then, that and is course, quite funny, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then that really affects why they go to church, right? So I'm coming mm. to church. There's something God's done in me that I need to bring. Um, mm. and, and 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 so it's like you and me, right? So the gift God has given me, He's not given for me, He's given my gifts for you. And the gifts, you know, this this remarkable mm. skill you've got conversation and radio show and communication, all those gifts that God's given you, He's not given for you, He's given them for me. Mm -hmm. And if you just figure that out and understand that, I think that'd be helpful. That'd be kind of weird if I just used the podcast to entertain myself. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm great at communicating almost... to myself. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, most of the jokes I tell are to make me laugh. And if elders join in, then great. But if they don't, it doesn't bother me. If I'm, honest, so. I'm okay with that part of my life. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, and another really good, I don't, I think filter is the wrong word, but another good way to build a foundation on any of these topics, you got the KC against the CC or versus the CC, but you also have this thing that you introduced to us, Kavana, yeah, and uh, about the heart, the, the, the intention and, and the purpose of why we're doing what we're doing. So how do we align our focus with God's purpose for the church with this Kavana heart? Yeah, so Kevin, just to, to remind your, your, your listeners or uh, viewers or flows who are only just stepping in, Kavanaugh is this um, Hebraic concept. Mm -hmm. um, and 
I believe that everything Jesus ever taught was an answer to a question about Kavanaugh or the question yeah. of Kavanaugh. And the question mm -hmm. of Kavanaugh is, do mitzvah, do commandments require Kavanaugh or don't they? In other words, do you have to have Kavanaugh when you fulfill a commandment? Basic means, Kavanaugh means to direct your heart. It's an awareness of God's presence and importantly, his purpose for what you do. So yeah, amen. the church, when you go to church, is your heart directed for his purpose for you being in church or your purpose? Mm -hmm. And that's that's the cabinet here. So as you walk through those doors, as you get up early in the morning, are you going there? Because I'm coming here to build everybody else up. I'm coming here as a witness to those who may be there for the first time. Or am I going because my, my week's been rough and hopefully I'll get something today? Yeah. Now, again, absolutely same old same old seek first the kingdom of god he'll give you everything you need so absolutely you may have had a rough week and maybe god will give you something but if you intentionally go for others far more likely that god's gonna actually connect with you in a way that's really gonna help you yeah exactly exactly i love that and i think it's interesting and you wrote something about this as well that people are that 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 have jesus in their lives that are christian we would never deny their faith they're so passionate about attending church yes and they use all of their passion to attend church so what can we do to change or use that same passion to be a little bit more purposeful for why he wants us even to be part of the church does that make sense yeah i think so well I, maybe because in the book i kind of unpack just like some problems if you like with the whole mm. concept of, of that and maybe i could kind of like go through that so because um one of the questions I ask is is uh, when is attendance not attendance and it's when we're not attentive so we see the duty <laughs> you know yeah, we see the duty of serving evangelism and discipleship there's an optional extra um, and sometimes I think there are three things I can listen. One is that we we prioritize benefiting over bringing. Um, mm -hmm. you know, the Holy God says, when you come together, each of you has a hymn or should have a hymn, a word of instruction, mm -hmm. revelation, a tongue and interpretation. Everything must be done so that the church may be built up, not that you may be built up. Uh, the mm -hmm. second thing is we prioritize services over serving. Yeah. And I think this is where we got a problem. So I tell the story that um, I... Over two week back back to back weekends, I was in very very different churches. The first time I was in St Andrews University in Scotland, um, a pre Reformation chapel. They have a chapel that's pre Reformation, so so the pews don't face the front in order to listen to the Word of God. Yeah. They face each other because the way they taught Scripture was through Psalms. You know, one side oh, would wow. sing the refrain and the other side would listen and then repeat. And the the pulpit was right in the top corner. Uh, yeah. the, the singing item was in Latin. It was incredibly traditional, no emotion. It was all more about, it was very cerebral, which I actually like. The following mm. weekend, or the weekend before, I can't remember which order it was actually, um, I was in Barbados in this kind of like Caribbean church that was, it looked like it had no order. Um, you know, so somebody <laughs> would get up, their singing item, somebody would get up, and if the singing item went well, everybody joined in, and, and we sang that song for 20 minutes. Mm. And then so, mm. so very, very different. And I, I, I caught myself thinking, I wonder which, which of these two do I like most? And then I thought, oh, well, wow. What, what difference does it make, right? So, yeah, yeah. so what difference does that make? Because if I worship God in one service more than the other, who am I, who am I worshiping, God or worship? Um, and so again, it's directing your heart because you're in the church. You're directing your heart to God, not to, not to the worship leader, hopefully, or the preacher, right? So mm -hmm. Isaiah says, "The Lord says, these lips come near to me with their mouth and honor. Sorry, but these people come near to me with their lips and honor me with their sorry. These people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Their worship of me is based wow. on merely human rules that they've been taught. Um, so we have to." not prioritize the actual service but the, the purpose of being there to serve one another you know so if i if i get up at the beginning of the service you know I, I like to tease people so i say hey how many of you are here to meet with god yeah and i'm like well, i'm not because <laughs> i've already met with him you know he was in my living room he was, he was in the car on the way here the reason i come to church is to meet with you wow <laughs> and, together, <laughs> and together as we meet together we we bring pleasure to god as we serve one another 
Yeah. And in the book, we, we talk about the fact that our commitment to God is seen, so our commitment to God is seen by God through our commitment to, to the body, uh, to God's yeah. body, right? So, so as we serve each other, that's how we serve God. Um, mm. As we encourage each other, as we bless each other, as we give to each other, that's our worship to God. And then yeah. thirdly, we prioritize religion over relationships. So I, I tell a story, um, and feel free to interrupt me here, but I tell a story of when I was part of a missions organization, there were two, two, two men I particularly became friends with, but they were very different. Uh, one was a German guy who was incredibly spiritual, very intense, knew his Bible back to front. He would lock himself in a closet for an hour just to worship God. And there was another guy called Gary who was a, a kind of a local English lad, working class lab. He'd had an awful background, ended up being a male prostitute, had some horrible things. He'd literally been locked in the closet by his parents when he was younger. Oh, um, wow. And so I got on with him well. You know, Gary, Gary was a bit of a lad. He had a like to have a joke. I, I, I like that, as you know. Um, Frank, on the other hand, was very serious but loved theology, and I like that as well. So I got on with them really well, but they did not get on with each other. Mm -hmm. And um, they just rubbed each other the wrong way. I don't think Frank knew how to cope with Gary. And Gary had never met anybody like Frank. Um, mm -hmm. And on the last day, um, Gary went up to Frank and said, "Look, you know, I know we've not got on well, but um, I just, I, I just want you to know, I'm, you know, wanting the best for you, you know, for the rest of your life, and, and goodbye." And he patted him on the back as he as he said it, just a, a way of you know being kind. Keep in peace, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. And then um, an hour later, Gary rushes into our dormitory, eyes bulging with tears. I've blown it, Paul, on the last day. I've blown it. The leaders have just brought me in to, to rebuke me because Frank complained that I attacked him on his back where there's no spiritual armor. So there's all this nonsense. Oh, my thing. goodness. No. Yeah, so all this craziness is going on. And I'm realizing, wow, Frank appeared spiritual. You know, he he appeared because he's very religious, but he he not understood this fundamental thing that our commitment to Christ is seen by Christ through our commitment to the body of Christ. Uh, and Gary had matured. He started off very immature. Certainly spiritually, he'd gained some maturities, but Frank just hadn't seemed to have changed. You know, 1 John 4 mm -hmm. says, whoever claims to love God, yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. So whoever yeah. does not love their brother and sister, uh, mm -hmm. whom they cannot see, uh, sorry, whom they can see, they cannot love God, who, whom they they've not seen and i've seen yeah yeah, yeah. so that, that, i don't know if that's answering your question blake has three areas where i think that that misunderstanding can affect our relationship and mm. and we're going to church but we're not going with the same alignment of kavana that god has mm -hmm. and i don't think we're seeing the rewards that we could yeah. see yeah yeah it, w the one that really stuck out for me was the prioritizing services over serving uh mm. when when i when i got off of my my addiction, you know, I was addicted to drugs for nearly 10 years and, and I joined this program called Teen Challenge. We mm -hmm. would go, we would go to, um, it was a free program. It was a blessing. It was a spiritual boot camp, amazing time. But oh. we would go to different churches to share our testimony um, and, and just to accept a, a donation or an offering, you know, to support the the ministry because it was free for us. Yeah. And I one, uh, one particular Sunday, we went to two different churches and, and this is why it really speaks to me. Um, in the morning time, we went to this like really old fashioned um, Baptist church. Everything was wood and there was an organ and um, they, they didn't have any type of like plan, you know, written out or anything. We just would show up and this nice elderly lady, lady went up to the organ. It was just playing it, but she was playing her heart out. Yeah, yeah. And there was simple hymns that you didn't, they didn't have a screen, you know, to put up the words, but she would sing it over and over again. And it was an amazing time. Uh -huh. and, and, and we were just worshiping and I didn't know any of the songs, but it was so easy to worship. And it was so easy to share about my testimony about what God had, took me from. An amazing yeah. time. Right. Um, and, and, and then in the evening time, we went to this really cool modern church with a lot of uh, a lot of people there and everything and I shared the testimony as well. And we knew all the songs, everything was professional, um, but it just wasn't the same. And I could not figure out what was going on, you know, but I didn't care. And I worshipped all the same because I was just thankful. Yeah. And I think that's what you, if, if, correct me if I'm wrong. What you're trying to say is it doesn't matter about the style. It matters about you know, God 
yeah. <laughs> and his people and we're yeah. there to serve them yeah. and so even though i think i would have naturally gone along more in the other church the more modern one but something was really attacking me there but i didn't care and i still shared my testimony and right. it was a great time and you would have thought the first one i would have been like oh boy this is going to be boring and they're not even going to understand anything that we're saying but they were so interested in our lives and it was just about like it was beautiful yeah and and i think that's what it's all about just connecting with people period because like you said loving your brothers and sisters yeah just the way it is yeah, yeah. that's pretty amazing styles you can't build a movement where you can you can build a style of church and you can build a denomination on a style but i don't think style is going to advance the kingdom of god mm. No, uh, I think contemporary. I, I love contemporary worship services more than I like any other style, but it's not going to bring revival. Um, mm -mm. It's only really transformation. I think as well. I, I'm just thinking now, just as you're saying that. I think maybe style is important when people are spiritually mature and they first want to first come into church. You know, if you're you think church is very old fashioned, you walk into a really modern environment, it can really be helpful because it it breaks yeah. your mind, you know, opens your mind, right? But I think the more spiritually mature you become, style becomes less important, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's just about the presence. And and I, I love the story about it, Isaiah, you know, and it was in God's presence that he found his calling. Yeah. And, and so I, I try and tell people, hey, it's about us coming together, getting into God's presence so we can find purpose and, you know, help each other to live that purpose out, not just in a church setting, not just in a worship service, but in our everyday it's well, it, it really breaks my heart to see churches use all this energy to put on a great Sunday service, yeah, and then they forget about the rest of the week. Yeah, we 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 took on many years ago. We took on a youth ministry. It's a big youth ministry in America, like an American mega church, and the they had incredible resources, and they had a youth building, and the youth building was called. I remember walking into it. The title was the Refuge. So it was like come out of the naughty world into the refuge. And I remember, <laughs> I always thought that's the first thing I'm going to change. <laughs> Um, wow. and, and we've actually talked a bit about it being the I rally this this idea. This is basically we come to rally together, to rally each other, to spur each other on, and then we're going out and, and doing it. You know, so this is not the place to come and hide from the world. This is the place where the world we're going to come in together just to begin to encourage each other to go and change the world. You know, so yeah, yeah. come on, yeah, so good, Paul. You've been doing this for th over thirty years now, and you, you're, yeah. I was going to make fun of you, I know, but I lost the humor. I, I don't mind. <laughs> you don't look like you've been doing it for 30 years. <laughs> no, 62 I'm, weeks, mate. What? Wow. <laughs> well, you look at least 61. But um, yeah, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> just playing. I, I really want to hear the heart of, you know, this this journey of you having this revelation of approaching church from a kingdom kingdom centric having a heart you know lifestyle um i've never known you or in any of your stories um uh, that you have ever struggled with being a consumer <laughs> I, I, I may tell me if i'm wrong but i've never experienced that with you in the time that i've known you or anything that i've read and or your stories you've always been the one that's like really challenged and asking the awkward questions and trying to look back and see you know, okay, what needs to be done more Christ-like here? Um, but I'm sure you have loads of testimonies of people and their light bulb going on, like, wow, I never thought of yeah. it that way. Um, any 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 personal testimonies of, of, of that transformation? Yeah, I mean, do you mind if I give one of my own transformations first of all? Please, please. This is the first time that kind of like the light bulb went on, or it was more like a hammer to the head, really. So this was... Yeah. So, so I think in, in the book, I basically tell a story that when I became a Christian, I basically adopted a Christian-centric Christianity. And, and, you know, for lot, anybody who's listening for the first time, Christian-centric is I pursue my vision. I do it God's way. So God gives me what I want. Kingdom-centric. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I pursue God's kingdom. I do it God's way. So I give God what he wants. So Christian-centric is all about me. So I get saved. Um, I backslid. And during that... When I come back to the Lord, I want to come back with a different kind of faith, right? But very, very early on, I'm reaching into schools and I'm, I'm just preaching on the streets. I think I've said this to you before. I, I probably preached about 800 times the gospel on the streets or in the schools of Manchester. And then a friend of mine said to me, hey, have you started preaching in church yet? 
and I said, I said, um, no, no. He said, as you pass not asked you to. I said, oh yeah, he's asked me to, but I've said no. And he said to me, why? Why have you said no? I said, I just don't think I'm good enough. And he went, oh, you're full of pride. <laughs> and I went, what do you mean I'm full of, full of pride? I said, no, no, I said, I don't think I'm good enough. He said, yeah, yeah, you're full of pride. You're more interested in what people will think about you than you are in serving your church. And oh, you my goodness. And that was the first, like, <laughs> okay, I'm, I might be approaching this the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was the first for me. I, I remember another guy who, um, he he went, his situation, and it was, again, it wasn't a theological light bulb for him. What happened was that, and this is the first person that came to mind when he said it, was he was kind of like a, what would you say? He, he was just like a going through the motions Christian, coming to church, mm. turning mm -hmm. up. You know, he'd comment that service was good. That wasn't so good. Enjoyed the worship today. Didn't enjoy the worship today. And then sadly for him, his, his girlfriend left him. And he had like a crisis. Oh, he just had a crisis where he really learned, really went deeper into God, came out of that stronger. And that affected the way he approached church. He started to serve. Okay. He started to be more about what's happening on the outside of church than on the inside of church. You know, he started to be more about how do I reach my 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 colleagues in particular. He had, I had a couple of conversations with him about that, mm -hmm. helped him think that through a little bit. So I don't know if that's what you're after, but um yeah, hundred percent. I think what those two things highlight is it's not it's not necessarily oh I suddenly see church a different way. It's I see my relationship with God a different way, and that yeah. affects the way I come to church. Yeah yeah so good so good i think i think we've you know um gi given some tools and and talked about you know asking these different questions and comparisons but you know j just wrapping it up someone's listening they're saying okay i love all these stories and stuff but just please remind me what can i do practically to change to shift my perspective of church attendance and and why i even come to church yeah how long have i got for this Oh, you got like uh, 10 minutes, eight okay. minutes. I, I would say three things you can do. Uh, I'll just okay. go through the book stuff really quickly. So first yeah. was contribute unconditionally. So, um, so. Say that again, contribute. Unconditionally. Ooh. So don't, don't give, don't come, don't contribute with strings attached. Um, I tell the story in the book wow. of the King's drought. So a King has a drought in his nation. He says to all the people, listen, we've got a drought. We need to we need everybody needs to bring some water for the community so come and bring some water and put in in the in the uh, well outside of the castle and people come with whatever he says whatever is in your heart to to give so some people come with barrels uh, uh, and some people come with wagons full of water some come with buckets some come with cups some come with uh, egg cups uh, and they get there and he's, the king's not judgmental at all they're just pouring whatever they can bring we're so yeah. delighted he says right open the doors to the treasure chest the treasure house and we open the doors and there's gold and there's gold coins and jewels he says okay anybody can go and get whatever they want uh you just have to fill whatever whatever you brought so some people went away with wagons full of treasure some people went away with barrels and, and oh some people went with cups and with egg cups right yeah and, yeah. and so i think um we we give we give unconditionally but i would question whether god returns unconditionally um and i know that that would be controversial but i just i just think the bigger that heart uh and the smaller our conditions the greater he will anoint and increase what you bring and i think that's okay. key the second okay. thing is contribute inconveniently so um again if it's about others it's not about our convenience you know i've got friends of mine who were business owners and they realized during there was a lot of stuff in america about um racism really came to the fore and it just really challenged them that that they realized that their their company was was all basically white people and they realized that was because they're very relational and they tend to offer jobs to people they know and because mm -hmm. they're a predominantly white church that you really enjoyed um that's what was happening in the business and they thought well we want to give other people an option we want to give african-american hispanic people uh, an option to to work for us and so what they did was they moved churches um which <laughs> i is remember really reading that that's so interesting <laughs> yeah because the new church which wasn't particularly the style that they would like to be honest with mm -hmm. you um and and what i say in the book is look, that's not going to be what god's going to call 99.9 percent .9 of us to do 
but we, what we can do is be on time mm. right so i think i you know again this is where the whole kingdom centric i identify as kingdom centric but okay be on time be early because what does it say to someone who's there for the first time when half the congregation walk in and some of them with coffee cups find it's absolutely late yeah 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 it, it, that wow. sends a message somebody once said that this uh, christian psychologist said um um consistent tardiness you know so consistent lateness is the first outward sign of a selfish person because we're not thinking about anybody else and uh, i think it was thomas merton said um true compassion is the willingness to allow one's personal agenda to be shaped or changed by the needs of others so yeah okay so i'm going to church you know i i personally really enjoy the message more than enjoy the worship if it's all about me i'm wandering a bit late talk to a few friends you know get in there listen get involved in the worship and then listen to the message and you know analyze it as i do um mm. if i'm a contributor if i i'm thinking okay i need to be there really i need to be looking for who is who is it i can encourage which i'll talk about in a minute I want to be there really i'm aware that other people will will come in who maybe for the first time and there's going to be nobody to greet them so so in the church i was at on sunday there were probably when the when the when the service started it's a small church there was probably about maybe a dozen people in there and and all the new people had come early right so people who don't normally go to church you know because they, they go they, they work for a business right so they know they've got to be on time so they're there but most yeah. of the most of the church isn't there it's really awkward because one of the things we know for visitors is particularly non-christians is they don't want to stand out right they don't want to stand mm. out. and this yeah, is where yeah, you yeah. talk about the fact that it's important to be thinking through those things so and yeah. the third thing is um contribute intentionally so again it says speak to one another with psalms hymns and spiritual songs sing and make music in your heart to god i just like this this phrase make music so we make music and mm -hmm. I remember reading that and my mind went to like birthday cards or greeting cards or thank you cards mm -hmm. i don't know about you but when i when i when i get a card there's two messages in the card there's a professionally written printed message and then there's a handwritten message from the person i i'll be honest i very rarely read unless it's a jokey card i very rarely read the printed message because it's yeah, yeah. this is created it's it sounds great and it's very professional I'm interested yeah. in this the, the handwriting that maybe is misspelled, the grammar's not good, um, mm -hmm. which from the heart. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say, you know, some things we can do is when you're in worship, don't don't just go with a professional worship leader. There's there's times in between songs to to share, even if you don't sing, just share your praise to God. It encourages others. Yeah. Nodding and, and saying amen. Amen means I agree. You know, I'm not one to say out loud very much, but I want people to look at me and notice that I agree with this message because my personal experiences tell me what this preacher is preaching from the word of God is true. Yeah. Um, yeah. In prayer, you know, pray for people without being told when and w when you have to pray for people. In some mm. services, they'll say, hey, go around and, and say hello to people. We'll do it without having to be told. So so do it in intentionally. Serve with without being told where you have to serve, you know? Yeah. I think the most significant thing anybody will ever do or the most significant thing you'll ever do uh, to advance the kingdom of god is the one thing no one tells you to do uh, yeah. you, you do what you're told but then you go this extra mile and that's where it really, really kind of makes sense and really has an impact i think so so yeah contributing intentionally um and, and making music making worship um when we're not told we have to do it or given it I think is 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 a fantastic thing to do in church. So interesting these points. When you look at them, when you've worked with different cultures and been in other countries, the Pharaoh the Pharaohese culture is, is a very late culture. You know, yeah. um, and, I think, <laughs> huh? I think that's just the Western church and the African church. I don't know about the Asian it, church. Oh but. my goodness, they are so late, and it's just the culture because it's like they have this culture because everything's dependent on the ships coming in and if it's bad right. weather they didn't come in so oh we'll just do it tomorrow so right. it's like oh if we can't do it today we'll just do it tomorrow yeah you know and then they come in casually late for church uh as well and it just so irritates and i knew when i came here to do missions work with my wife i knew the culture but i still stressed because it was church you know the meeting was starting we had everything ready and uh, all set up 
and there's nobody there. I'm like, oh, nobody's going to come. I'm freaking out, you know? And 15 minutes later, the place is full. It's like, come on, guys. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love these practical tools. Um, they're, they're just, yeah, really tangible. Um, and so, the book, so good. Yeah, in the book, there's some more um, in-depth stuff that kind of backs yeah. us. I've got some stats in there about yeah. how COVID has affected church and just yeah. understanding that, that whole thing about going to stir one another up. Um, isn't that word that's used for stir isn't what we think i won't mention it now but it's it's a really what that really means is is not what i thought um wow. so when the bible says stir one another up to, to, oh to come up, to yes work. yeah i, I love to do word studies because you find out like wow okay it's not so passive as yeah. i thought it was it's actually quite aggressive <laughs> very cool paul thank you so much this has been a really good discussion right here you are also doing other avenues of communicating the kingdom centric chapters yeah. um you have a a youtube series yeah is YouTube's, that correct yeah it's going live now so i think the first two or three episodes are out there so if people want to hear it's just 20 minutes if they want to hear me speak on on each of the subjects okay. if they go to pays movement so pays yeah. movement has a channel on youtube um, but also i think if you just put in kingdom centric paul gibbs i think you'll yeah. probably find the videos and there's a series like right now i think three of them are up but well, there will be 10. Yeah. we'll do 10 episodes on this i guess because there's 10 mm -hmm. chapters and there'll be 10. Mm -hmm. and of yeah. course you get the book you can get it on kindle um it's going to be out on yeah. audio soon apparently so that'll be kind of cool as well so. are you doing an audio version of the book are you using your voice or an american were you no we're using my voice with ai nice oh yeah so you just say a bunch of things and then it captures your voice and then it yeah, 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 yeah. That's so, so cool. It, it's it corrects everything. So it, it's me, but how my father wished I talked. <laughs> anybody that's knows, me, be anybody fun. knows me? Go, mm, that's I, can, I know it's Paul, but it's not Paul. You know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. That's gonna be fun. <laughs> um, for those listening out there, thank you for joining us here on the Life on Mission podcast, and I hope you're enjoying and being challenged with this series on the kingdom centric book there's lots of resources that pace movement puts out there and books i think another good one that would be good for to understand what it means to be kingdom centric there's this other uh, resource that we have called the shapes test mm -hmm. and it really helps you find out about you and how you interact with others because we're called to love others we're called to journey with others and sometimes mm -hmm. you're wondering why can't i just not get along with this person do the shapes test and you'll find out why <laughs> <laughs> yeah but um you'll hear from us again next week as always be blessed and know that you are called to live life on mission take care everyone bye-bye